Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. We're in Calabasas, California. We're at the Yamaha Guitar Group, and we're actually in the part of the Yamaha Guitar Department, I guess you would say, where you guys are designing the guitar, the electric guitars, right? Yep, this right. place is called uh, Yamaha Artist Services, Los Angeles, uh, Yasla for short. We love acronyms, of course. Right. Uh, but this is the home of guitar development for Yamaha electric guitars. So, right. And uh, you are the man who does that, right? You're yeah. the, the loop, uh, guitar designer, product of senior guitar yeah. designer and uh, luthier, right? Senior designer luthier, yep. Right. Um, been here for about six years in March. And uh, I work primarily for electric uh, guitars and basses, although in the past, for the first five years, I was by myself. So I also did acoustic guitar and, and things like that in our previous workshop. Right, right. And you guys have a beautiful luthiery, luthiery, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Shop uh, behind us here. And you've got your own workshop here where you're designing the Yeah, guitars. so the room we're in now is called the clean room, uh, you know, just... So it's a, it's kind of where everything starts and ends. Um, we have our, our wood selection room right off the side here in the buffing room. Uh, and then this is where we do the assembly. Uh, so when we moved to this shop, I designed this whole workshop in a certain way. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the dust would be on one end of the building and the spray booth is on the other end of the building. Smart. So uh, we're trying to keep the dust out of the finish and, right. and just give you know the best product that we can out of here. Right. I don't think it's real common knowledge that actually the entire RevStar line is really based out of the U.S., correct? Yeah, so um, the RevStar itself was designed by a Polish designer, um, Piotr, and he is in Japan right now. But uh, the whole kind of design team and, and everything kind of all ran through our previous shop in Burbank, um, and we did tons of evaluations. We built all the prototypes here. Um, but when we were designing RevStar, there was probably about 15 guitars that were completely different shapes, different feature sets, and things like that. I built some, some guys in Japan built some, and we just kind of work in this really collaborative way to just what's the best. And we just want to find out what is the best guitar, what's the best sound, what's the best right. feel, play, all those things. Right, right. what a cool yeah. job. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no yeah, doubt. I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> so so take us through the process. We're actually here before uh, Winter Nam 2019, yep. and uh, you've got a new model here that, uh, that you guys designed here, or you designed here yep. in-house, right? Yep, this is a RS820. Um, this this is a new color that we're offering in this uh, nice teal, um, and it's got this black anodized pick guard. Mm -hmm. It's pretty uh, similar in uh, its feature set. It has the nice dry switch here. So instead of a coil tap, this is actually a low end cut. It's a nice feature uh, because you actually get to get that more stringy sound without all the noise, you know, right. and you're not losing the power either. Every time you cut your, your humbuckers in half for the single coil, you're cutting your volume in half too. So right. there's been lots of advancements in trying to come up with like a noise canceling, you know, um, facsimile of, 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 you know, single coil pickup, but they always come just like this little small bit too short. So this is our way of providing a usable sound that is something that, uh, you know, is much more easy for the customer to like hear when you when you pluck it, it's it's a noticeable change and it's a really usable function without right. any of the noise, without cutting the volume in half. It's there's not a lot of caveats that come with it. Right, so yeah. that, you know, we're we're just trying to remove all of the obstacles of the instrument itself, just so you play the darn thing. Right. And that's what it's supposed to be about. You're supposed to forget about this when you play mm -hmm. and just you know, be one with your music. You're just trying to get what's in here out through the speakers. You know, that's that's really what it's all about. Sure, sure. So where do, do the ideas come from? Right, do you just wake up in the middle of the night and say, I got to get down to the shop and get my chisels out and, <laughs> and start working? Or what, what is the process of, of designing a new guitar? So um, we actually do a pretty unique process. So um, what we do is we come up with a design concept and we kind of have competing concepts. So we'll come up with maybe three or four different ideas of like um, the the RevStar's main concept was something called butility, right? Uh, and it was something that was beautiful and utilitarian. Mm -hmm. And all the colors are based on tools and things that you would see in this workshop. Okay. So all the colors that were kind of like these muted, more gray or blacks and dark greens and things like that, they're all based on utilitarian items, things that, you know, they're our thickness sander or, you know, our, uh, you know, Haas NC machine or whatever. Just we're picking like little parts off of, you know, what you would see in a motorcycle shop. This is a, you know, the, this model is called 
RS820CR, meaning Cafe Racer. And Yamaha has this really long, beautiful history of motorbikes and the Cafe Racer style of bike. Guys love chopping them up. And this is supposed to be the embodiment of that spirit of, you know, the stripped down, chopped, like no nonsense, no frills guitar. It's supposed to be, you know, a great guitar for many different styles and just be comfortable, you know? It's it's supposed to be made for the player. It's, you know, just all, all the features that you want and none of the excess fat that comes with it, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So what kind of uh, uh, feature would come up where you'd say, no, we can't do that. That's not going to work. Um, you know, there there are some things when it comes to, um, you know, we, we often test a lot of exotic materials. And, you know, it's like I can make something here. I can make crazy stuff here. But if we're going to make it for the customer – it has to be, you know, affordable too. So I always think of Yamaha as like the people's guitar, mm -hmm. right? We're an affordable brand, but we do make beautiful high-end stuff in, in the acoustic line and electric line. We always have, but, you know, people tend to know us as their first guitar. And what I'm trying to do is make it their second, third, and fourth guitar. Right. And we're, we're trying to be there for the every man, the every woman, the player who is the, you know, out there being like a weekend warrior or the road warrior or you know just a workhorse so that's what they need from us and yamaha is known for reliability and known for quality sure. and there's some things where we can build something that's pretty out there pretty wild um that maybe teeters on the edge of uh you know an art piece or something that's maybe a little bit more fragile we'll do that for an artist right you know if we know an, a certain artist is more delicate then maybe we'll build something in mind knowing that they're going to take care of this a little better than sometimes i'll make something for an artist that's built like a tank because i know they're gonna slug it out on the road <laughs> but it's great you know that's what i want i want guys to go out there and beat them up because you know it tells me that they play it it tells me that they actually appreciate it that they love it and um you know when it comes to inspiration for designs and stuff i mostly think of guitars as a you know we're a fashion brand um guitars are clothes we're putting them on over everything we wear. We're standing in front of all the people we love and want to impress. We're there to, you know, show our face and, and put on a great show. And you have to look good doing it. It has to, you know, whatever, match your outfit or match your personality, your style. Right. And Revstar is a style-driven instrument. It's supposed to be for, you know, the style player or somebody who, it, you know, is visceral somebody who you know needs something that really speaks to who they are as a player and also deliver on all the table stakes which are you know it has to play great it has to stay in tune it has to intonate properly it has to be comfortable you know all those things sure. so you know th that's that's really where it comes from is you know what can we do to meet the needs of our customers while still expressing our creativity and you know making something that's affordable and something that we can make a in a large scale. Right. Right, yeah. right, which is a huge part of it, right? Yeah, for it's sure. One thing to make a one-off and another thing to make a million of them. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like I, I travel to our factories all over the world, and I work with workers. I do training on how to do, like, certain fret work techniques or assessing the capability of our machinery because part of what happens here is I can design the most complex guitar, but if we can't build it in a factory, it's going to be a problem. So I travel internationally to all of our factories in Japan, Indonesia, um, and we're working now with folks in Europe of our distributors and things, um, just trying to get as much input as we can to make the best guitar for everyone. You know, right. it, this is not supposed to be... Um, you know, something that's so expensive that it's just out of the reach of the every person, you know, and that's who we're trying to reach. We, we want more people to make music. We right. want more people to like just get in there and play and, to, you know, just right. have fun. That's right. what music it. is about. It's not competition. It's, it's just artistic expression, you right. know. So how long does it take from the concept 
to a finished guitar? Is it a couple of months, a year, two years? Well, you know, it really depends on how the project is structured, right? So if this is going to be a production instrument, it's going to be like a three-year process. We start with concepts, we evaluate them, then we decide on a concept, and I'll build like three or four rounds of prototypes. You know, I'll make eight guitars at a clip, and then we'll bring in folks for evaluation. Uh, We try and test it with artists, with consumers with dealers we try and check out all, whatever features we like and we keep refining and this is our process okay you know so for a production instrument it could be up to about three years mm. and for a artist instrument if it's something like i'm going to build them a custom rev star a lot of the work is already done uh you know i've already programmed and done a lot of the work that it takes to build one of these instruments but we'll have a sit down and we'll say okay you know what kind of hardware do you want what kind of paint job do you want do you need some something specific like uh do you need the guitar to be specifically light or you prefer a heavy board or, you know, right. whatever it is. So we go into detail in that uh, respect. But like behind me, I had this Revstar hollow body. It's a custom for Dave Kooning from the Killers. And um, this project has been going on for, uh, I would say, about a year um, just because, you know, schedules and things like that. Sure. It could be as short as six months. It could be as long as, a, you know, a year or two, year and a half for a one-off, but like the John Patitucci, like custom base that took about a year mm-hmm. and about a hundred hours to build something. So it, it all varies depending on complexity and, you know, what the artist really is looking for. Sometimes we have them come in during certain key phases of the build to say, okay, how do you like the feel of this neck? Maybe I'll cover their hands with like pencil lead and have them kind of run their hand up and down the neck to see like where their pressure points are and oh, things yeah. like that. Right. And, you know, just do those kinds of things to really give that experience that, you know, this is an artist services, you know, building. So it, what we're about here is, you know, all the R and D, but also we do all the artist instruments. So we really try and go above and beyond um, to play to our strengths, which is we're there when you need us always, no matter what, if it's right. Sunday, you know, at four o'clock and your guitar just, you know, took a dump, I will be there in 20 minutes to come fix it, you know, and I've done it. And, and, and that makes me feel good because, you know, it just means they've outperformed, you know, themselves and they've done such a great job and it helps me learn how to improve the process for the next time. So yeah, it's, it's all about, you know, providing that service and it could be, pretty long pretty short but we'll we'll be there that right. that's that's you know our mo right right awesome yeah. so tell us a little bit more about the process with a, a signature model for a, for either a guitarist or a bassist do sure. they come to you and say hey i've got this great idea you guys should build this or, sure. or are you seeking artists out or how does that work uh well you know we've been working recently um more with guys from smashing pumpkins we did the billy corgan signature acoustic guitar um that was actually pretty short um that's something where typically what happens first is our artist relations will you know have this relationship with the artist and they talk about you know anything that they need standard product that's out on the road they they like you know some guys will say i really like this or i love this guitar but i wish this or i really love this but i want it to be like this that and the other thing you know like completely different right and you know we kind of have that negotiation i guess is one way to put it but of you know what's feasible what matches the product and things like that uh and then we really work to you know uh, of course please the artist that's our first and foremost and then you know how can we actually produce this so what he's playing or she's playing on stage is what he or she gets in the store, you know, gets from Sweetwater. And I'm sure you guys, when you guys, you know, receive the boxes from us, you want it to be perfect. You want it to be, you know, ready to go, even though you guys do like such a great job with all the setups and, you know, taking care of the customers. We want to do that work so you don't have to, you know. So um, when it comes to building an artist instrument, it's typically, you know, they build that relationship and then um, they'll come here often and i'll sit with them and we'll do that chat we'll you know we'll fill out that spec sheet and then i'll build them a few instruments they take them out they say yay or nay it's good this needs to be tweaked i thought i would like this but it turns out i don't or you know some some folks really want a interesting choice of 
woods or, or something like that, and but they're right. wanting a specific sound, and those two don't always line up, you know? You can't make a, a really bright-sounding guitar out of all basswood or, or right. a really dark-sounding instrument out of, you know, one-piece maple body, and, you know, those kinds of things don't jive. So we try and work all those things out, and it's a, it's just a really collaborative process. Mm-hmm. It's It's, you know, we're trying to meet their needs and we're trying to glean from them as much as we can to improve our product. So it's, right. it's just the kind of this two way street and yeah, that's kind of how it goes. Awesome. It's gotta be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's fun. I mean, I've had the honor of working with a, a lot of really excellent artists, guys that, you know, I've loved for a long, long time and yeah, it's, it's really an honor and, you know, I'm just here to serve, uh, those guys, you know, I, I don't really mind much, you know, <laughs> about you know a lot of folks will say like oh you you must really love this job or something like, you right. know and it, it's to me what makes me the happiest is when i ship the instrument out and it never comes back right. because that you know what that means that means uh you know either there's no mistakes you know and and they're they're playing it and that's great you know right. that's all i want to see i want to see the picture of them on stage you know having a good time and the instrument that i make just shouldn't you know make any uh you know uh, have any kind of input on their performance their performance is like i said it's all about translating your what's in your brain to come through those speakers and i want them to forget the guitar even exists or the bass even exists in their hand you know that that's really what it's about for well, me that's awesome yeah that's awesome yeah. Pat, thanks so much for taking the time here to, to tell us about what you, you do here in the design center it, 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 uh, artist services building what, what a cool uh, what a cool thing you have going on oh well thank you very much really I, I appreciate it absolutely nice to meet you see you Nam. you will indeed <laughs> and thank you for joining me here in calabasas we're at the yamaha guitar group and i'm mitch gallagher from sweetwater